Section 1 of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Freedom of Information Act Documents Unidentified Flying Objects by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 1 UFO Federal Bureau of Investigation U.S. Department of Justice Communication Section August 11, 1947 Teletype FBI Portland 8 11 47 1 17 p.m. PST K.A.M. Director Urgent Flying Discs Security Matter Dash X. One blank, former Navy pilot and presently blank Myrtle Creek, blank Oregon, reports seeing a mysterious object on two occasions the evening of August 6th while flying at about 5,000 feet above Myrtle Creek. Hatfield to be interviewed. Bobbitt. End. 5.18 p.m. OK, FBI, Washington, D.C., G.A.R. Stamped, recorded, and indexed, 30 October 1947, EX-60. Standard Form Number 64, Office Memorandum, United States Government, to Director FBI, from SAC, Milwaukee. Date? August 12th, 1947. Subject, Flying Discs, Sabotage. Reference is made to Bureau Bulletin No. 42, Series 1947, dated July 30th, 1947, Section B, which advises that all reports concerning flying discs should be investigated by field offices. Prior to the receipt of these instructions, two instances were called to the attention of this office concerning flying disks. One report was received July 7, 1947, the details of which are set forth in Milwaukee Letter to the Bureau, dated July 8, 1947, entitled, Flying Disks or Saucers, Miscellaneous, Telephone Call from Mr. Fletcher at the Bureau, at 8.30 a.m., 7.7.47. No investigation was conducted concerning this report. The second report was received by this office at 1.20 p.m., July 11, 1947, from Blank, who is in charge of the Civil Air Patrol of Wisconsin, an auxiliary of the Army Air Force. On that occasion, Blank calling from Black River Falls, Wisconsin, telephonically advised this office that an object in the shape of a disk, 19 inches in diameter, had been found July 10, 1947, by one blank city electrician on the Jackson County Fairgrounds, near Black River Falls, Wisconsin, about 3.30 p.m. The disk might be made of a substance such as cardboard covered by a silver airplane dope material. The contraption has a small wooden tail like a rudder in the back, and inside of the disk is what appears to be an RCA photoelectric cell or tube. Also inside the disk is a little electric motor with a shaft running to the center of the disk. At one end of the shaft is a very small propeller. In Blank's opinion, that contraption might possibly have been made by some juvenile. Blank stated that he desired to return the contraption to Milwaukee and eventually turn it over to the Army Air Force, but that the finder, Blank, apparently wanted to get some publicity on his find and wanted it returned to him. This information was telephonically called to the attention of Assistant Director D. M. Ladd of the Bureau on July 11, 1947. Subsequently, SAC 
H. K. Johnson telephoned Colonel Blank in charge of counterintelligence, 5th Army, Chicago A.C. of S. G. 2 Headquarters, 5th Army, East Hyde Park Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, who stated he would contact Blank of Black River Falls, Wisconsin. No further investigation was conducted in this matter. The above constitutes the only two instances in which this office was contacted concerning flying disks. Unless contrary instructions are received from the Bureau, this office does not contemplate taking any further action in connection with the above two cases, but will fully investigate all future reports concerning flying disks. JGF DDC 98-0 Stamped Copies destroyed, 270, November 18, 1964. August 5, 1947. Omaha, Nebraska. Dear Blank, I wish to acknowledge receipt of your letter postmarked July 10, 1947, together with its enclosure. Inasmuch as the information which you furnished is of great interest to the War Department, I have taken the liberty of furnishing it to that agency for their consideration. Sincerely yours, John Edgar Hoover, Director. WVC MJP RB 62-83894 Stamped, Recorded, and Indexed EX-8 Standard Form Number 64 Office Memorandum United States Government to D. M. Ladd from J. P. Coino Date August 1, 1947 Subject Mrs. Blank, Informant There is attached hereto a letter received from the captioned individual postmarked July 12, 1947 concerning flying saucers there is also attached a letter of acknowledgment to blank blank together with a letter to the War Department for approval. It is recommended that the letter to the War Department be forwarded to the liaison section for transmittal to that agency. Attachments WVC MJP Handwritten, handled separately Stamped, recorded, and indexed FBI Teletype Decoded Copy Washington from San Francisco S2 8947 250 PM KC Director FBI and Sachs Seattle and Portland Urgent Flying Discs Security Matter X Lieutenant Colonel Blank of G2, San Francisco, advised today he has no further information and that our Seattle office is in possession of all information known by him and is handling the matter at Tacoma, Washington. Kimball. Received 8-9-47, 8-15 p.m., Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Sachs, Seattle, and Portland advised. If the intelligence contained in the above message is to be disseminated outside the Bureau, it is suggested that it be suitably paraphrased in order to protect the Bureau's coding systems. Stamped GIR-9 Recorded EX-45 Standard Form Number 64 Office Memorandum United States Government to Director FBI From SAC, Norfolk Date, August 8, 1947 Subject, Flying Discs RE, Bureau Bulletin No. 42, dated July 30, 1947, Series 1947, wherein information is set forth pertaining to flying discs. There is enclosed with this letter a newspaper clipping from the Norfolk Ledger Dispatch, dated July 9, 1947. 
the photograph appearing on this clipping is alleged to represent a flying disc which was observed by Billy Turrentine, a Norfolk schoolboy, who was successful in photographing the object with his small camera. Billy was interviewed on August 8, 1947, by Special Agent A. Blank, at which time Billy informed that the original negative was given by him to a Mr. Brown of the Photo Craftsman Service, who in turn furnished the negative to the International News Service. Billy advised that he has an agreement with Mr. Brown whereby the latter will share equally in any profits derived from the use of the negative by commercial firms or newspapers. As of August 8, 1947, Billy has not received any remuneration for the use of this negative. He informed that he was sitting on the front porch of his apartment, which is located on the third floor at 410 West 14th Street, Norfolk, Virginia, around noontime on July 8, 1947. He had read numerous newspaper articles pertaining to flying discs, and decided to sit on his front porch in the hopes of seeing one and attempting to photograph it. On July 8, 1947, Billy observed a large black object moving rapidly through space proceeding from the southwest to a northeast direction. He said the black object was followed by two smaller objects, which also proceeded in the same direction. Billy explained that the objects were moving at a very fast speed, which appeared to him to be much faster than the speed of an airplane, and further, that the objects appeared to be extremely high. He said that they were much higher than the average plane travels in the city of Norfolk, and appeared to be above the clouds, and that a white mist followed each of the three objects. Billy was unable to state what the black objects represented, but admitted that they could have been large balloons. He indicated that he has observed small toy balloons flying through the air, but that definitely these were not the toy-type balloons. He said that when he first observed the objects, they were at such a great distance from him that it was not necessary that he raise his head in order to see them from his porch on the third floor of the apartment building. He immediately turned around to obtain his camera and estimated it took him approximately twenty to thirty seconds, at which time the discs were almost directly over his apartment, and it was necessary that he stoop and look up almost perpendicular in order to obtain the photograph, which accounts for the porch railing being shown in the newspaper clipping. Billy pointed out that the day on which he took the picture, the weather was hazy and somewhat cloudy, and there was a slight breeze blowing from the southwest, in the general direction of the northeast, which is the same direction traveled by the black image which he photographed. Inasmuch as the Army authorities in the Tidewater area of Virginia are cognizant of the above information, no further investigation will be conducted by this office in this matter. Enclosure TJC LAB 62-182 Stamped, recorded and indexed. Copies destroyed, 270, November 18, 1964. End of Section 1「Section 2 of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Freedom of Information Act Documents Unidentified Flying Objects by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. » This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice, Communications Section, August 4, 1947 Teletype. Washington from Newark. 8447. 536 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time.
J. F. G. Director, Urgent. Flying Disc reported at Hackensack, New Jersey, August 3, 1947. Miscellaneous information received that blank, age blank, blank, age 20, blank, Hackensack, and blank, blank, Fort Dix, New Jersey, on late afternoon, August 3rd last, sighted from ground object described as flying disc. Blank claimed it was 200 blank yards, in air, revolving slowly, moving rapidly, and neither a kite nor a balloon. Blank telephoned information to Hackensack PD. Inquiry being made, Bureau will be kept advised. McKee Recorded 62-83844-49 End. Act, please. NKR1 Handwritten Info brought to the attention of blank, 8647. Stamped, recorded, EX-46. Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice, Communications Section. August 6, 1947. Teletype. FBI, Portland, 8547, 850 p.m., HHS. Director and Sachs, Seattle and San Francisco. Urgent. Flying Discs. SM-X. Re-telephone call from Mr. Ladd, 1 p.m. today, requesting teletype summary concerning newspaper reports of recent reported flying discs in Portland area and a reported conference of Army officials in Portland concerning flying discs. Blank Blank, the Oregonian, advised that a Captain William L. Davidson and Lieutenant Frank M. Brown of 4th AAF Headquarters, San Francisco, were in Portland July 27 last and interviewed Blank, an experienced pilot, who had reported June 14 last seeing a formation of ten flying disks over Bakersfield, California. According to Blank, they had also interviewed following four experienced pilots who were among first who reported seeing disks. Blank, to ascertain the purpose of the interviews, Blank contacted Major General Twining of Wright Field, Ohio, by phone at Albuquerque, New Mexico, and from him gained the impression that the AAF instituted this investigation to wash out the disc reports, since they are definitely not of AAF origin. On Friday, August 1st, the plane in which AAF investigators Captain Davidson and Lieutenant Brown were riding crashed at Kelso, Washington, and both were killed. The wreckage was screened by AAF intelligence from McCord Field. The Tacoma News Tribune and through them, the United Press put out a story the plane was carrying parts of a disc which had struck a boat owned by Harold Dahl and Fred Chrisman, Tacoma, Washington. Blank advised that today's issue of the Oregonian carries a U.P. story stating that Dahl denies saying the metal fragments he furnished were from a disc, and analysis of the fragments shows them to be from a Tacoma slag mill. No AAF intelligence personnel available, Portland. No recent substantive reports of flying discs in the Portland area. Seattle verify at McCord Field and San Francisco verify at AAF headquarters, San Francisco, submitting teletype summaries to the Bureau. No further investigation, Portland. Bobbitt. End and AC. WA 0157 AM. OK FBI. WA DW. SE. S. OK FBI. SE KLS. SF, OK, FBI, SF, NCW, DVI, MSC. Handwritten, B7C, 8647, 
C.C. Mr. Ladd. Stamped, 67C. Recorded and indexed, EX-30. Standard Form Number 64. Office Memorandum, United States Government. To D.M. Ladd. From blank. Date, August 6, 1947. Subject, Flying Saucers. Special Agent Blank of the Liaison Section contacted Lieutenant Colonel Blank, Army Air Force Intelligence, inquiring about an article which appeared in the West Coast newspapers recently, stating in substance that an airplane carrying recovered flying saucers crashed en route from Portland, Oregon to Los Angeles, California. Blank advised Blank that the only information that has been received by headquarters of the Army Air Forces is that a CIC agent of the 4th Air Force's headquarters, Hamilton Field, San Francisco, was killed in an airplane crash. The headquarters of the Air Forces have been advised that he was on a top-secret mission. Blank indicated that he was under the impression that the CIC agent was either en route to or from an interview with Blank, who is one of the individuals who first saw one of the flying saucers. Blank stated that the Air Forces have no additional information and will receive none until the report is received from the 4th Air Forces. Blank suggested that the San Francisco Field Office contact Colonel Blank, Headquarters, 4th Air Forces, Hamilton Field, San Francisco, who undoubtedly would be able to furnish the details regarding this matter, which are at this time unknown by the headquarters of the Air Forces. Blank pointed out to Blank, however, that it was his belief that no flying saucers have been recovered, but that it was merely an attempt to re-interview an individual who previously had reported seeing one of the flying saucers. SWR RNR Stamped Recorded EX-25 Date August 5, 1947 To Director of Intelligence, War Department, General Staff, The Pentagon, Washington 25, D.C. Confidential by Special Messenger Attention Colonel Blank from John Edgar Hoover, Director, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Subject, blank. There are attached hereto copies of a letter received from the above-captioned individual concerning flying disks. Blank letter has been acknowledged, and he has been advised that copies of his letter have been furnished to you for your consideration. Attachment. W.V.C. M.J.P. R.B. Handwritten. Declassified. 2040. 831.87. H.M. Stamped. Recorded. Communication section. Mailed 10 p.m. August 7, 1947. Federal Bureau of Investigation. U.S. Department of Justice. Invoice of Contents from Federal Bureau of Investigation, Washington, D.C. Date, 9 Case References, Flying Saucer. Consigned to, blank, Estill, South Carolina. List of Contents. Powered Soapstone. Special Instruction. Illegible, Room. Place date of shipment and registry number, shipping room, above date of this invoice, then return it to person whose name is checked in column at right. After this checked name has been initialed, invoice should be placed in administrative file. Stamped, communication section, mailed 7 p.m., September 13, 1947. Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice. Registered. Federal Bureau of Investigation, United States Department of Justice. 2. Communication Section. 
August 7, 1947. Transmit the following message to SAC, Detroit. Urgent. Unsubs, blank informants, flying disc, miscellaneous Rotel August 5th material should not be forwarded to FBI laboratory for examination, but should be turned over to the Army Air Force Intelligence. Hoover. RGF-MAE. Stamped. Recorded and indexed. Federal Bureau of Investigation. U.S. Department of Justice. Communication Section. August 7, 1947. Teletype. Copies destroyed. 270. November 18, 1964. End of Section 2. Section 3 of The Federal Bureau of Investigation, Freedom of Information Act Documents, Unidentified Flying Objects, by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Date, August 1, 1947. 2. Director of Intelligence, War Department General Staff, The Pentagon, Washington 25, D.C. Personal and Confidential. Attention, blank. From John Edgar Hoover, Director, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Subject, blank. There are attached here to copies of a letter received from the above captioned individual concerning flying saucers. Blank letter has been acknowledged and she has been advised that copies of her letter have been furnished to you for your consideration. Attachment. WVC MJP. Handwritten. Declassified. 2040. 83177. HM. Stamped. Received and indexed. Standard Form Number 64. Office Memorandum, United States Government. To Director FBI. From SAC, El Paso. Date, July 22, 1947. Subject, blank. Flying Objects in Air. Blank has come to the resident agency at Santa Fe, New Mexico, on several occasions, to report that she has received information concerning flying objects passing through the air. Some of the reports that she has received concern light objects seen at night, which have allegedly been followed by explosions. She advised that one of such objects was reported by blank blank, who works near Canhilon, New Mexico. She claims that others were seen near Park View and Tierra Amarilla, New Mexico. Blank called attention to clippings from various newspapers concerning disc-like objects seen in New Mexico and other parts of the country. Blank claims to be a student of radio waves and ray forms and contends that the above-mentioned objects may be missiles similar to those appearing over Sweden some time ago. Blank has discussed the above with officials of the Atomic Energy Commission and has written the Secretary of War and other government officials concerning her theories. Blank, for the AEC, has advised that officials at Los Alamos consider blank blank unreliable and possibly not well balanced mentally. She has mentioned to agents of this office that she was struck by lightning when a child. On July 15th, Blank came to the Santa Fe Resident Agency and advised that she had written to Walter Winchell, promising him a story in connection with the flying disks. The foregoing information is being submitted to the Bureau, inasmuch as Blank has written to several government officials and Mr. Winchell. 62-0-3594C FTM G. H. Stamped, recorded, and indexed. 
Standard Form No. 64. Office Memorandum. United States Government. To D. M. Ladd. From E. G. Fitch. Date seven twenty four forty seven. Subject Flying Discs. Reference is made to my memorandum to you in the above captioned matter dated July tenth, nineteen forty seven, indicating that Brigadier General George F. Shulgin of the Army Air Corps Intelligence had requested that the Bureau cooperate with the Army Air Corps Intelligence in connection with the above captioned matter. The director noted on the referenced memorandum, I would do it, but before agreeing to it, we must insist upon full access to discs recovered. For instance, in the L.A. case, the Army grabbed it and would not let us have it for cursory examination. This is to advise that Special Agent Blank has recontacted General Shulgin and advised him in connection with the director's notation. General Shulgin indicated to Blank that he desired to assure Mr. Hoover of complete cooperation in this matter and stated that he would issue instructions to the field directing that all cooperation be furnished to the FBI and that all disks recovered be made available for the examination by the FBI agents. General Shulgin pointed out to Blank that he will from time to time make the results of the studies of his scientists available to the Bureau for the assistance of the FBI field offices. General Shulgin indicated to Blank that there has been a decrease in the reported sightings of the disks, which might be because of the fact that it has lost much of its publicity value. He indicated, however, that he believed it necessary to follow this matter through to determine as near as possible if disks were in fact seen and to determine their origin. General Shulgin inquired of Blank the method by which the Bureau would make the information obtained from the Bureau's inquiries known to the Air Corps in the field as well as at the War Department level. Mr. Blank pointed out to General Shulgin that the best procedure appeared to be through the regular established channels. It was pointed out to General Shulgin that the Bureau field offices maintain close liaison with the intelligence divisions of the various armies as well as close liaison with the intelligence division of the War Department. General Shulgin indicated that he would be satisfied to receive information through this means. General Shulgin indicated to Blank that he believed that there was a possibility that this entire matter might have been started by subversive individuals for the purpose of creating a mass hysteria. He suggested that the Bureau keep this in mind in any interviews conducted regarding reported sightings. General Shulgin stated to Blank that he would make available to the Bureau all information in the possession of the Air Corps regarding the sightings which were first reported so that the Bureau could conduct some investigation regarding these individuals to ascertain their motives for reporting that they had observed flying disks. When General Shulgin makes the information available regarding these individuals, it will be promptly brought to your attention. SWR RNR Stamped Copies Destroyed 270 November 18, 1964 50. September 30, 1947. Recorded. EX-43. Memorandum for D. M. Ladd. 7-23-47. Recommendation. There is attached a Bureau Bulletin to the field for their assistance in handling this matter. Attachment. End of section three. Section four of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Freedom of Information Act documents Unidentified Flying Objects by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. July 30th, 1947. Blank, blank, Brooklyn 27, New York. Dear Blank, I desire to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated July 14th, 1947, and to express my appreciation to you for bringing this matter to my attention. The information set forth in your letter has been carefully reviewed and is being maintained in this bureau as a matter of record. Sincerely yours, John Edgar Hoover, Director. Note. Blank has been a previous correspondent with the BU file blank. No record could be located in the crime records section, indication that the correspondent might be a mental case. Stamped, recorded, communication section, mailed 10 p.m., July 31, 1947, Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice. Standard Form Number 64, Office Memorandum, United States Government, to D. M. Ladd, from E. G. Fitch, date seven ten forty seven. Subject: Flying Discs. At request of Brigadier General George F. Shulgin, Chief of the Requirements Intelligence Branch of Army Air Corps Intelligence. Special Agent Blank discussed the above-captioned matter with him on July 9, 1947. General Shulgin indicated to Blank that the Air Corps has taken the attitude that every effort must be undertaken in order to run down and ascertain whether or not the flying disks are a fact and, if so, to learn all about them. According to General Shulgin, the Air Corps Intelligence are utilizing all of their scientists in order to ascertain whether or not such a phenomenon could in fact occur. He stated that this research is being conducted with the thought that the flying objects might be a celestial phenomenon and with the view that they might be a foreign body mechanically devised and controlled. General Shulgin also indicated to blank that all Air Corps installations have been alerted to run out each reported sighting to obtain all possible data to assist in this research project. In passing, General Shulgin stated that an Air Corps pilot who believed that he saw one of these objects was thoroughly interrogated by General Shulgin and scientists, as well as a psychologist, and the pilot was adamant in his claim that he saw a flying disk. General Shulgin advised blank that the possibility exists that the first reported sightings of the so-called flying disks were fallacious and prompted by individuals seeking personal publicity or were reported for political reasons. He stated that if this was so, subsequent sightings might be the result of a mass hysteria. He pointed out that the thought exists that the first reported sightings might have been by individuals of communist sympathies with the view to causing hysteria and fear of a secret Russian weapon. General Shulgin indicated to blank that he is desirous of having all the angles covered in this matter. He stated that reports of his scientists and findings of the various Air Corps installations will be available in his office. He advised that to complete the picture, he desired the assistance of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in locating and questioning the individuals who first sighted the so-called flying disks in order to ascertain whether or not they are sincere in their statements that they saw these disks, or whether their statements were prompted by personal desire for publicity or political reasons. General Shulgin assured blank that there are no War Department or Navy Department research projects presently being conducted which could in any way be tied up with the flying disks. General Shulgin indicated to blank that if the Bureau would cooperate with him in this matter, he would offer all the facilities of his office 
as to results obtained in the effort to identify and run down this matter. Blank advised General Shulgin that his request would be made known to the Bureau and an answer made available to him as soon as possible. Blank also discussed this matter with Blank of Blank. Blank indicated that it was his attitude that inasmuch as it has been established that the flying disks are not the result of any Army or Navy experiments, the matter is of interest to the FBI. He stated that he was of the opinion that the Bureau, if at all possible, should accede to General Shulgin's request. SWR, AJB Addendum I would recommend that we advise the Army that the Bureau does not believe it should go into these investigations, it being noted that a great bulk of those alleged disks reported found have been pranks. It is not believed that the Bureau would accomplish anything by going into these investigations. D.M.L. First handwritten note. I think we should do this. 7-15. Second handwritten note. I would do it, but before agreeing to it, we must insist upon full access to disks recovered. For instance, in the L.A. case, the Army grabbed it and would not let us have it for cursory examination. H. Stamped. Recorded. Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice, Communications Section. August 14, 1947. Teletype. FBI Seattle, 8-14-47. 5.15 p.m. F.B. Director. Routine. Flying disks sighted by blank. Tacoma. Washington. S.M.X. Rotel instant date. Please be advised that blank did not admit to blank that his story was a hoax, but only stated that if questioned by authorities, he was going to say it was a hoax, because he did not want any further trouble over the matter. Complete report now en route to Bureau AMSD, which indicates probably blank made the anonymous phone call in the hope of building up their story through publicity to a point where they could make a profitable deal with Fantasy Magazine, Chicago, Illinois. Blank will not be re-interviewed unless advised to the contrary by the Bureau. Wilcox. A and hold, please. 9.16 p.m. OK, FBI, Washington, D.C., G.A.R. Stamped, 18, August 26, 1947. Recorded and indexed. G.I.R. E.X. 67. B. Flying Disks. The Bureau, at the request of the Army Air Force's intelligence, has agreed to cooperate in the investigation of flying disks. The Air Forces have confidentially advised that it is possible to release three or more disks in odd numbers, attached together by a wire, from an airplane in high altitudes, and that these disks would obtain tremendous speed in their descent and would descend to the earth in an arc. The Army Air Force's intelligence has also indicated some concern that the reported sightings might have been made by subversive individuals for the purpose of creating a mass hysteria. 73047 Bureau Bulletin No. 42 Series 1947 you should investigate each instance which is brought to your attention of a sighting of a flying disk in order to ascertain whether or not it is a bona fide sighting, an imaginary one, or a prank. You should also bear in mind that individuals might report seeing flying disks for various reasons. It is conceivable that an individual might be desirous of seeking personal publicity causing hysteria, or playing a prank. 
the Bureau should be notified immediately by teletype of all reported sightings and the results of your inquiries. In instances where the report appears to have merit, the teletype should be followed by a letter to the Bureau containing in detail the results of your inquiries. The Army Air Forces have assured the Bureau complete cooperating in these matters, and in any instances where they fail to make information available to you or make the recovered disks available for your examination, it should promptly be brought to the attention of the Bureau. Any information you develop in connection with these disks should be promptly brought to the attention of the Army through your usual liaison channels. Stamped. Recorded 78. August 4th, 1947. 252. August 18th, 1947. End of section 4. Section 5 of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Freedom of Information Act Documents, Unidentified Flying Objects, by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. July 10, 1947. Blank, blank, Darlington, South Carolina. Dear blank, I wish to acknowledge receipt of your Western Union telegram dated July 6, 1947. Your interest in bringing this information to my attention is greatly appreciated. Inasmuch as the contents of your telegram appear to be of interest to the War Department only, I have taken the liberty of turning this information over to that department. Sincerely yours, John Edgar Hoover, Director. C.C. Savannah. Note. The telegram referred to flying disks. Stamped. Communication section. Mailed 2 p.m. July 14, 1947. Federal Bureau of Investigation. U.S. Department of Justice. Recorded and indexed. July 10, 1947. Blank, blank. San Marcos, Texas. Dear blank, I wish to acknowledge receipt of your Western Union telegram dated July 7, 1947. Your interest in making this information available to me is greatly appreciated. Inasmuch as the contents of your telegram appear to be of interest to the War Department only, I have taken the liberty of making the information furnished by you available to that department. Sincerely yours, John Edgar Hoover, Director. C.C. San Antonio. Note. The telegram referred to flying disks. Stamped. Communication section. Mailed 2 p.m. July 14, 1947. Federal Bureau of Investigation. U.S. Department of Justice. Recorded and indexed. EX-64 July 23, 1947 Blank, blank, Westport, Connecticut Dear blank, Your letter dated July 27, 1947, together with enclosures, has been received, and I want to thank you for submitting the letter you mentioned to me. Sincerely yours, John Edgar Hoover, Director B-H-I-P-I-B. Stamped. Communication section. Mailed 2 p.m. July 23, 1947. Federal Bureau of Investigation. U.S. Department of Justice. Recorded and indexed. EX-57. Federal Bureau of Investigation. U.S. Department of Justice. Communication section. July 18, 1947. Teletype. Washington from Boston. 3. 18. Director. Metal fragments observed at West Ringe, New Hampshire, July 7, 47, 
Security Matter, X. Blank, Security Officer, MIT, Cambridge, Mass., advised that today he was in contact with one blank blank of West Ridge, New Hampshire, a retired blank of the New England Telephone and Telegraph Company. Blank advised that at approximately 3 p.m. on July 7 last, several people sitting on a porch observed on the lawn of blank route blank West Ridge, New Hampshire, little cup of smoke which on inspection disclosed small burned blank spots about one and one-half inches in diameter on the green lawn. Also in the long dry grass on both sides of road in a circle approximately two hundred feet in diameter, several little blazes had started, and the fire blank department was called. Fires were apparently caused by metallic fragmentation, which were turned over to blank, of MIT by a blank blank of the telephone company. Blank has advised blank that their general blank appearance are similar to the lining of V-2 bombs which he had observed at New Mexico. Blank Professor Blank, an outstanding metallurgist at MIT, stated that they are possibly the lining from a jet turboplane. At present time, he is in process of analyzing two of these pieces. These scientists, in roughly reconstructing the metallic object, state it was approximately 14 inches in diameter, 3 sixteenth of an inch thick, and machine-tooled, and some fragments indicated they were burned, and blank appeared to have been subjected to terrific heat. These scientists are treating this matter as classified information. Mr. Blank Blank at West Ridge, New Hampshire, is also endeavoring to collect additional fragments, and has stated that the fire chief at West Ridge has also several fragments in his possession. Blank indicated that the Blank residence is seven to eight hundred feet east of the railroad tracks. Blank stated he will make the results of MIT research available if significant. Opinions of scientists, as set forth above, suggest possible military interest. Military authorities at Boston have not been notified. Susi. Hold. Stamped. Copies destroyed. 270. November 18, 1964. Recorded and indexed. EX-64. Standard Form Number 64. Office Memorandum. United States Government. To Director FBI. From SAC, New Haven. Date July 18, 1947. Subject. Flying Saucers. Edwin M. Bailey, Jr., Stamford, Connecticut, Informant, Atomic Energy Act. For the information of the Bureau, this is to advise that on July 7, 1947, blank Stamford, Connecticut, appeared at the Stamford Resident Agent's Office and furnished the following information. Blank prefaced his remarks by stating that he is a scientist by occupation, and is currently employed at the American Cyanamid Research Laboratories on West Main Street in Stamford, Connecticut, in the Physics Division. Blank further indicated that during the war he was employed at MIT, Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the Radiation Laboratory, which laboratory is connected with the Manhattan Project. Blank advised that he is 30 years of age and is a graduate of the University of Arizona. Blank stated that the topic of flying saucers had caused considerable comment and concern to the present-day scientists, and indicated that he himself had a personal theory concerning the flying saucers. Prior to advancing his own theory, Blank remarked that immediately after the conclusion of World War II, a friend of his, Blank, 
allegedly observed the flying saucers from an observatory in Milan and Bologna, Italy. He stated that, apparently at that time, the flying saucers had caused a little comment in Italy, but that after some little publicity they immediately died out as public interest. Blank stated that it is quite possible that actually the flying saucers could be radio-controlled germ bombs or atom bombs, which are circling the orbit of the Earth and which could be controlled by radio and directed to land on any designated target at the specific desire of the agency or country operating the bombs. He stated that one of the items of interest which he personally has observed is the fact that the saucers have been observed in Mexico City, New Orleans, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Halifax, Newfoundland, Paris, Milan, Bologna, and Yugoslavia, as well as Albania. By placing a string around the globe of the Earth, it would be noticed that all of the above-mentioned cities form a direct orbit or circle around the Earth and would be more or less in line of any path in which the saucers could be circling. Blank further stated that he had recently talked with Blank Blank, one of the owners of Blank in Glenbrook, Connecticut, and had been informed by Blank that his company is making a large powerful telescope to be used in searching the stratosphere for atom bombs. FXM CLB 117-0 Stamped Recorded and indexed, EX-36, GIR-6, Copies destroyed, 270, November 18, 1964. End of Section 5「Section 6 of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Freedom of Information Act, Documents, Unidentified Flying Objects, by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Standard Form Number 64 Office Memorandum, United States Government. To Director FBI. From Sack, Butte. Date, July 3rd, 1947. Subject, Flying Discs. Mr. Blank of the Idaho Daily Statesman, Boise, Idaho, telephonically contacted the Butte office and asked if the FBI was checking on the flying discs reported to have been seen by many citizens. He advised that so many had reported having seen them that it undoubtedly was not a figment of the imagination. He said that these discs had been seen on July 1, 1947, in the vicinity of Trail Creek, near Sun Valley, Idaho, by reputable citizens. The writer informed Blank that this office was not making an investigation and inquired as to whether he had contacted Army and Navy officials. He said that he was inquiring of these agencies. W.G.B. L.B. Air Mail Stamped, Recorded and Indexed, EX-46 Standard Form Number 64, Office Memorandum, United States Government, to Director FBI, from SAC, Los Angeles, date July 17, 1947, subject, Recovery of Flying Disc, North Hollywood, California, July 9, 1947. On the evening of July 9, 1947, a report was received at the Los Angeles office that a so-called flying disc had landed in the vicinity of Radford and Magnolia Streets in North Hollywood, California, the contraption being briefly described as approximately 30 inches in diameter, all metal, disc-shaped, 
and having a radio antenna. It was reported to have burst into flames upon landing. At the time of the report, the disk was being held at the Valley Fire Department in Van Nuys, California. Special Agent Blank went to the fire department immediately, at which time it was found that a number of people had gathered, including newspaper reporters and photographers who were taking pictures of the disk. Battalion Fire Chief Blank advised Agent that at approximately 10.30 p.m., an unknown woman called on the telephone and excitedly reported that the disk had dropped into her garden where it began to flame, her residence being located at 11858 Magnolia Boulevard, North Hollywood. A fire department truck was sent there and put out the flaming object with the fire hose, after which the object was taken to the fire station. Special Agent Blank thereafter arranged to transport the disk to the office. The device is briefly described as consisting of two convex steel disks, approximately two feet in diameter, fused together at the outer edge and fastened together in the center by a hollow cylindrical connection. A vertical galvanized iron fin was screwed to the top of the disk, and a short length of pipe closed at one and ran from the outer circumference into the interior of the contraption. What appeared to be a radio tube was installed in the center of the top side. The contraption had a total weight of approximately 20 pounds. At the bureau office, a series of photographs were taken of the device from various positions, and a set of these photographs are being forwarded herewith for the bureau's inspection and information. The flying disc was thereafter turned over to Major blank blank ac g-2 fort macarthur san pedro california who subsequently reported that the object was definitely a hoax and under no circumstances could have flown under its own power stamped recorded and indexed ex-64 copies destroyed 270 november 18 1964 Director, FBI, July 17, 1947. Re, Recovery of Flying Disc, North Hollywood, California, July 9, 1947. On the following day, July 10, 1947, one blank blank North Hollywood reported that on this morning he was at the North Hollywood service station eating at which time there was considerable talk about the flying disc having been found in the vicinity. A number of what appeared to be young high school students were present and were having quite a laugh about the excitement caused by the finding of the disc. Blank stated that he received a definite impression that these young students either had themselves or knew of someone who had been working for the past two weeks making this flying disc. Blank was unable to furnish the names of any of these young men, but identified one of them who was making the statements as being employed in a Chevron service station at the corner of Victory Boulevard and Whitset Street. He described the youngster as about 16 years of age. The above information was also furnished to the G-2 office at San Pedro, California. MMB, MGM, 100-9099, Enclosures 3. Standard Form Number 64, Office Memorandum, United States Government, to Mr. Ladd, from blank. Date, July 10th, 1947. Subject, Flying Saucers, Discs. Information Concerning. At 6.45 a.m. this date, Sack Hood telephonically contacted the Bureau and advised, at approximately 11.30 p.m. July 9th, 1947, 
the office in Los Angeles had received information from the resident agent at Burbank, California, that a flying disc had landed in or near Burbank and had been seen to burst into flame when it landed. Further, that it had been the cause of a fire in some woods, this fire either in Burbank or possibly in the city limits of Los Angeles, which Mr. Hood could not be certain. The fire chief at Burbank had called the resident agent at Burbank and told him he would hold the disc for him. Coincident with the information received from Burbank, the Los Angeles office received calls from the newspapers requesting information. The newspapers stating they had called the Army Air Force Intelligence, who had stated, We are not interested. According to Mr. Hood, this comment had aroused the newspapers, and they stated they intended to publish this quotation and belabor same in their first issues. Mr. Hood stated that he had refrained from making any statement to the press other than to admit possession of an object and that it was being turned over to military authorities in the morning, this a.m., it being Mr. Hood's opinion that he did not want any quotes in the press and certainly not one to the effect that we were not interested. As described to him, Mr. Hood stated that the object was an aluminum disc about two feet in diameter, weighing about ten pounds, painted with aluminum paint, and having some sort of a radio tube in the center of the disc. This object was in possession of the resident agent at Burbank and would be turned over to military authorities, G2, in Los Angeles this morning. Mr. Hood's purpose in calling was to place the Bureau on notice regarding the above-described object, and any further information would be transmitted to the Bureau at once. Action? None indicated. P.E.W. D.A. Stamped. Recorded. July 18, 1947. Blank, blank. Chicago, Illinois. Dear Blank, I wish to acknowledge receipt of your letter postmarked July 7, 1947. The information contained therein has been carefully reviewed and is being made a matter of permanent record in the files of this Bureau. Your interest in writing as you did is indeed appreciated. In the future, should you have any information which you feel might be of interest to this Bureau, you might find it convenient to contact the special agent in charge of our Chicago office, which is located at 1900 Bankers Building, Chicago 3, Illinois. Sincerely yours, John Edgar Hoover, Director, C.C. Chicago, with incoming. There is no identifiable information in the Bureau's files concerning the writer of this letter. Despite the fact that this letter refers to flying disks, it is not believed that the information furnished is sufficiently important to refer to Army authorities. W.V.C. W.M.J. Stamped. Communications Section. Mailed. 10 p.m. July 18, 1947, Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice. End of Section 6 End of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Freedom of Information Act Documents Unidentified Flying Objects by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation